Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to discuss slowly changing dimensions. This is the first video in data warehousing concept series. I will be putting more videos in data warehousing and data modeling. So please do subscribe to the channel and like my videos. So slowly changing dimensions are very important because in real world dimensions are not uh, the attributes and dimensions may change over the period of time. That's why we call it slowly changing because they don't change very frequently, but yeah, over the period of time, the dimensions will change. But what is dimension? Dimensions are like attributes, like we can have a product table, right? Product table will have product information. Let's say product name, size, right? Category, bunch of attributes we can have. Similarly, we can have location table, right? Location is also dimension table. So it will have uh, city, state, country, right? So these are called dimension table because there is no transaction data or there are no sales or anything as such. Just the attributes, just the information about something, right? So these are called dimension tables. Now these dimensions, because they change over the period of time, there are different ways of storing data into their data warehouse. Based on your use case, you have to decide that you have to do slowly changing dimension or we call it SCD, SCD 1, 2, 3. There are other SCDs also, but these, these three are most used. Actually, 1 and 2 are most used. So we'll discuss all three and then you will understand when to use what. Okay. So we will continue with the example of product table. So this is our product table, let's say. Okay. Let's say this iPhone 11 is launched. Let's say in Amazon.com and they have a product table. So they will make an entry in your their product table. So this has product ID one, phone uh, phone name iPhone 11, category mobile, price 10,000. And this was launched on 1st January. So the last update is 1st January 2022. Okay. So this is my one entry in product table. Now what happens? As you know, iPhone 11 prices will change over the period of time. So on March, we saw that price has become 8,000 now what you will do. So one way is as soon as the price becomes 8,000, you will just update it to 8,000. You will come here, run update query and make it 8,000, right? And you will say it is updated in March. So for March, it is 8,000. So in this way, you have the latest information in your table. So this is called SCD type one. In SCD type one, we have only the latest information. Now, if someone asks me what was the price in January, I won't be able to tell with SCD type one, right? Because I know latest price is 8,000 and that's it. Okay. In some use case, it is good. But for this use case, I think this is not a right way because let's say you want to see how much sales we did with iPhone 11 over the period of over 2022. Okay. So in January, February, you sold some units, let's say 200 units, right? In Gen Feb, you sold 200 units. Now in March to December, you sold 800 more units. So total 1000 units you sold, right? Now if you want to see how much sales is generated, you should know in Gen Feb what was the price. But the problem is we don't have that information. So what we will end up doing it 1000 into 8000. Okay, 8 lakh. This much sales I did. But that is wrong, right? Because in Jan Feb, the, the price was 10,000, 10, right? To, 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 to solve this problem, we will use SCD type 2. But in some cases, SCD type 1 may work. Let's say employee table, you have an employee designation. You don't care what was the designation in the last year. You will just update it with the latest designation, right? So use case to use case, it will depend, right? So to solve this problem, we will move on to SCD type 2. I will just copy this again. Okay, so now we will uh, we will see how we will do in SCD type 2. So I will move it back to January. So initially, this is how it was 10,000. Right? And on 1st of January. Now what happened? The price has changed as you see on first March. So what I'm going to do to implement SCD type two, I will take two columns instead of update date. I will take effective date, expired date. 
I will create two columns instead of just a update date. And what I will do, as soon as I see there is an update on 1st March, so initially when I enter this record, effective date is 1st March and expired date, I will keep it as high date. So I will keep 9999-1231. So it is like after this date to this date, my price is 10,000, right? But what happened on 1st March, price has changed. So as soon as I see, okay, 1st March, it is 8,000. I will expire this record. I will say that now from 1st March, there, uh, there is a price change. So I will expire this record. So I will just put it here. Okay. And instead of 1st March, I will put 28 Feb. So till 28 Feb, this price is valid. And after this, what I'm going to do, I will make one more entry. I will make entry with 8,000, right? And effective date will be now from 1st March. From 1st March, I have new price, right? From 1st March, I have new price. And this will be again high date I will put. 9999-1231, right? So now if I have to check what how much sales I did whole year, so for my, from this date to this date, I will take this price. And from this date to this date, I mean, whatever after it, I will take this price, right? So this is how we will maintain the history. Now in let's say May, one more, uh, there is a price drop. So what I will do, I will just again make one more entry, right? iPhone 11, mobile, let's say it is now 7,000, 7,000. And this will be from April, let's say 1st April. Okay, and this will be expired on March 31st. Okay. 2022. Right. So again, if you want to see sales all over the year, from this day to this date, you will pick this price. From this day to this date, you will pick this price. And from this day to this date, you will pick this price. So that problem of not having history is solved using SED type 2. Now there's one problem in this table now. There is no unique key. Okay. In every table, we should have a unique key to identify any record. In this table, we had product ID, right? So this product ID was used to use it, uniquely identify a record. But here there is a problem. The problem is there is no unique key, right? This, these are all, there's no single column from where you can identify uniquely. So for that, we introduce surrogate key. So I will just insert one more record. I will say uh, product key maybe. Okay. And this will just repeat. This will just uh, incremental number. So it will be one, two, three, and it will be incremental. It will not repeat. So product key is a surrogate key. This doesn't have any business significance, but to uniquely identify any record in this table, STD type 2 table, we will introduce this surrogate key. I hope this is clear. Apart from this, we can have a current flag also in this table. Some, some people will keep, some people will not keep. So current flag. So current flag will tell you that is it a latest record. So wherever we have hide it, it will be 1. Otherwise, it will be 0, 0. So if you want to see what are the latest price of a product, of all your product, you can just filter on current flag equal to one and you will get everything. Similarly, if you don't want to keep this, you can just say where expiry date is high date. Give me those records of so each product, you will get latest information, right? So this is how SED type two works. Very simple. Uh, we can implement it in SQL also. Let me know if you want me to make a video on it. I will make a video on how to implement SED type one and SED type two. So do let me know. But I hope this is clear, right? If you have another product, similarly, you will create a uh, history and the surrogate key will be running, right? And only for each product, you will have one record with current flag equal to one. Okay, let's move on to SCD type three. Mostly 95% of the case, you will do either SCD type one or SCD type two in your in your database. Mostly, I 100% I'm sure, okay? Let's, uh, since it, it, it is asking, asked in interviews also, let's discuss STD type 3. Mostly, no one will ask you apart from these three STDs. So, what is STD type 3? So, in STD type 1, we saw 
we have the latest information and in scd type 2 we have all the historical information now in scd type 3 we just keep history of one previous record what do i mean by one previous record is let's say again this is our first march uh, first january okay this is how it was 10000 so in this what we will keep we will keep one more column let me insert a column So there is this column, uh, previous price and price. So just one previous information we will keep. So this will be initially null because first time when this was entered, there was no previous price. It will be 10,000 null and update date is 1st January. Now on, on 1st March, on 1st March, there is a change, right? So what we will do, this price we will keep in the previous price and the latest price will be 8000. And I will update it as 1st March. So last update is on 1st March. Previous price was 10,000 and current price was, uh, is 8000. We don't know anything else. Just previous one history we will keep and that's it. Now let's say on April again it changed. So what I'm going to do this price, I will go to keep in previous price. This will be 6,000, 7,000 sorry. And I will update the date to 1st April. Right? So in this we will keep just the previous price. Not very important in real world. Hardly you will use this. Mostly it will end up in SCD1 or SCD2. But from interview point of view, you should know it. There are other four, five, six. You can Google it. You, if you have understood this, you will understand those also. But, but these two are most important. So make sure you understand this. And in some video, I will just explain it. There are different ETL tools in that also you can implement. In SQL also, pure SQL also, you will implement. I will show you how to do in SQL in another video. But do, do, like this video, share with your friends so that it is it is clear for them how to decide which table to choose for data warehouse. And thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.